Hey there Alconiacs, sorry I'm late, but here is a breakdown to the last trailer of Omit B Season 3. I'm going again with the knowledge of what happens in the first two episodes of Season 3, so there will be some spoilers for that and any media that's been released online by the cast or official accounts. We start out with some shots of the previous season and a voiceover by Mabel into a scene early in Episode 1. This is intercut with a few frames that appear to be multiple emergency vehicles on a street. There's quite a few people walking back and forth casually. I don't think that this is in front of the Arconia. More than likely, it's the Gooseberry Theater. I think this takes place the night of this next clip of Detective Williams walking in from the back of the Gooseberry Theater. It looks like her police car is behind her. I think she went in to figure out who killed Ben and after being there for some hours, someone was arrested. Not necessarily the killer though. So Detective Williams thinks that the killer is in the room. So who's in here? Aside from our podcasters, Loretta is right in the middle. She's looking like the obvious choice, but I feel like even if she isn't the killer, there is something more going on with her story. In episode one of this season, we see Loretta's home, and she has these distinct shelves. It's maybe a grayish seafoam green. Those shelves appear in this trailer, first by what looks to be a scrapbook dedicated to Ben Glenroy followed by Oliver wearing a nighttime robe with a shocked look on his face. I think Oliver and Loretta have been getting up close and personal, like Loretta stated she wished to do. Oliver goes to Loretta's place, and while she's maybe in the bathroom, he finds this notebook. I think he keeps this to himself and brings it up to Mabel and Charles later, where she will explain that Ben is her nephew or son, who was given up and he never knew. Also inside the apartment, there is what looks to be a picture of a woman and a little boy. This could very well be Loretta and Ben, or maybe Loretta's sister and Ben. But I do believe that it is likely Ben in this picture. If not, this is Loretta and her son who she lost, and she is projecting onto Ben of what she had. Also, there is a Christmas sign that says, Merry Christmas, Aunt Loretta. Now, this makes me think even more that she is in fact related to Ben or could be his aunt. Maybe maybe she gave her son to her sister and never looked back. Next to her we have Bobo. We don't know no too much about him other than he is a part of the cast and Ben always says no to him. We have to listen for what he says to the trio or Detective Williams when he's being interviewed, but right now I don't think he has a strong enough motivation. After that we have a cast member named Ty. Ben thinks he's attractive and didn't want to share the name of his personal trainer with him. That is pretty much all we have from Ty. I don't think it's enough of a good motivation from him to be suspected to be the killer, but something could happen later on. On the other side is Jonathan, Howard's boyfriend. He's been subletting in the Arconia for about a year and he is the understudy to Ben. It would be understandable that he would not be the biggest fan of Ben, especially after Ben tells him that he was never going to get a moment on stage, but maybe he will think about it. The disgruntled understudy is a very good suspect, and that is a bit of motivation. It's enough to at least question more. Judging by a shot later in the trailer, I'm guessing on the other side of him is Kimber, and we don't see too much of her so f and we haven't seen too much of her so far, but we do know we'll see more. It seems that Kimber and Ben may have had a bit of a relationship. Ben told her, I'm sorry I made everything messy between us. I fucked up and I'm going to make it right. It's also stated that Kimber is a TikTok star, and if Ben did something to upset her online following, that could have made things messy. But that's just grass and gas straws. We don't know what Ben did. There are two other people on stage, but I can't make them out and they don't appear to be listed as cast on the mortar board. So we're just gonna forget about them. Maybe they'll come back around. Speaking of the murder board, this is likely the first murder board we will see consisting completely of people who are part of the production and I believe this is in episode 3 titled, Grab Your Hankies. 
Later in the trailer, we will see Mabel and Tolbert in an updated version of the board, and I'm guessing that will happen around episode 5. On this first board, cast and crew will likely have been whittled down to people who were able to reduce their death rattle handkerchiefs, and that is why the episode is aptly named Grab Your Hankies. This will clear them as a suspect. The second board has many of the cast and crew removed, but it added joy in the phrase Ruby Strippers Lipstick. Just after that, we see Oliver inside Ben Glenroy's dressing room, and we can confirm that it is by a shot inside of his dressing room in episode 2. It's got the same lights and a small vanity mirror, but there was something written on the mirror in what appears like it could be red lipstick, and it was smeared. Oliver looks at his hand in this clip, and it makes it seem as if he is the one who smeared it. I mentioned in a previous video that Joy's red lipstick smeared on Charles's lips at the end of season 2, and she wiped it off. This could tie in to why Joy's name and ruby red lipstick was added to the board. Mabel also catches Tolbert being spooky around the back hallways of the Gooseberry. I'm sure he will have some good excuse and it appears they go to dinner together. Tolbert's voice here seems to be a little shaky, so it may not be a romanceful situation as it may initially appear. Later we see Oliver walking down a hallway with police behind him. It looks too grungy to be the back of the theater and sort of looks like an apartment building so I'm going to guess that this is Loretta's apartment and this takes place after Oliver has called the police about the Ben Glenroy scrapbook that he finds thinking that she is the killer. We then see Charles using his old Brazo skills to break into Ben's dressing room likely looking for clues. This is cut with different footage of Charles and Oliver both in Ben's dressing room. Charles is wearing different clothing, but Oliver's shirt and scarf makes me think that Charles and Mabel are in Ben's dressing room around the time that Oliver is there with the smeared lipstick and they likely know what it said or maybe Oliver smeared it before they came in. And I think it would be pretty interesting if this was a taunt from the killer. Later we see Charles has a copper mug in his hand and I'm guessing that they are thinking that Ben was poisoned and will try to figure out what he drank and who had access to that before he went on stage. And I'm still guessing that this yellow thing that's on a third version of the murder board is a tea packet. Next to it is a death rattle themed cookie I believe and they are going back and forth about what one of them was used to kill Ben. Next we get a voiceover of Charles talking about someone has tried to kill him three times already that day with sandbags falling all around him. Mabel Oliver and Howard are here and if the killer is trying to kill Charles and if the killer is trying to take out Charles I would say Howard being in the scene would make him safe. Howard has been moved to a series regular and I think that's too much to make him a killer but maybe something nefarious in the long run. Charles is holding on to a goldfish bag. I have no idea why Charles would have a goldfish, but goldfish do appear in the trailer again while Charles is singing some song and I'm guessing it may have something to do with this fish. A quick side note, this has been a great musical season so far. We've had at least two little musical numbers, the show can't go on and Oliver and Loretta singing. And now the show, Death Rattle, is going to be turned into a musical. The music in these episodes felt very natural and not at all forced. So if it keeps up like this, I think it will fit in very nicely with the season. Later we see Charles getting let out of a storage room where time seemed to move very slowly for him. Helping him out was Mabel and Tolbert. It looks to be shortly after Mabel finds Tolbert sneaking around and Charles has this copper mug in his hand. Next is a shot of Charles talking to a woman that we haven't seen before. Her shorter hair doesn't look familiar, but if you think you know who this is and I may have missed it, let me know down below. Speaking of blondes, we then get a shot of a blonde Cinda Canning. I'm not gonna lie, it looks good on her, and it looks like she's in a different era of her life. I think everything that happened with Becky Butler made her change 
into a more positive podcast host. I would assume by her look that she has nothing to do with true crime, and maybe she gives Mabel the reins to her old stuff, allowing Mabel to make enough money to stay in the Arconia. Mabel has been pushing the podcast, and it appears that the murder board moves from Charles' place to Mabel's, and this could help feed into the idea of Mabel becoming a podcast producer. I think it also fits in well with some of the themes of the season, and I'm working on a video about that. I'm hoping to get that out tomorrow. After that, we get a shot of Charles punching Ben on stage. I think this is all a part of Death Rattle, so it isn't telling of anything really. It's just a nice shot. I post things from my videos and other interesting things that I have found that I don't think could fit into a video into the Only Murder subreddit. I don't hang out there too much. I try and stay away from possible spoilers and I don't want my thoughts to be swayed. I usually just post something in there and if someone comments on it, I'll talk back to them. But you can find things that I didn't put in these videos because I don't think it really fit, like some of the items that I found in Loretta's apartment. There could be some hints in there, but I just don't have time to go through deep dive into all of those things. If I remember, I'll try and put them in a list in the description. It's very early in the season and almost impossible to know who the killer is. But if I'm going to say who it isn't, I'm going to remove Joy, Loretta and Howard from the equation. I think that they are all important to the story and that Joy is the person that Charles was talking about when he said, stay away from her. I know what you did or she told me what you did, but ultimately I don't think she or any of the others are the killer. Tolbert seems too obvious. He is the person that's lurking in the background, snooping around. My money is on Jonathan or Ben's brother, but really there's not enough information i feel to have a solid theory but who do you think the killer is what was written on ben's mirror in red lipstick let me know down below thank you all for watching and i'll catch you on the rooftop
Thank you.